Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, May 31st, 2019. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front over there in Asia, it's down. Over there in Europe, it's down. Here in the States, it's down. Oil's down, down, down. Gold is up, up, up. And Bitcoin's up, dip, a little bit. Dow drops more than 350 points after Trump threatens new tariffs on Mexico. Posts six-week slide. Oh, wait a minute. You mean I thought it was down just because of the new tariffs on Mexico? You know what that is. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. It's always either tariffs or trade war. Here's the deal. The S&P 500 ended this month down 6.6%. And that's getting close to correction territory, which is 10%. And the Dow has now dropped six straight weeks, which is the worst downward shift since 2011. You remember, things weren't so good back then. So, what else is going on? Well... Gold hits seven-week high. You know why? After Trump's Mexico threat rattles markets. The markets have been rattling for a while. We've been saying the why it's been rattling. How about this one? Brazil's shrinking economy sparks fears of quick return to recession. Yeah, their uh, gross domestic product fell 0.2%. This followed the release of a host of weakening indicators, including industrial production down, blah, 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 blah. Name the country, it's a global slowdown. The equity markets are slowing down. The global economy is slowing down. And U.S. interest rates are going to go down. And that's why you got your trend alert yesterday. U.S. interest rates coming down, will it stop recession? So... Gold is going up even though the dollar is staying strong because they expect interest rates to go down and the lower interest rates support gold because they reduce the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding bullion plus the destabilization. Go back to your trends journal. Why is gold going up? Here's what we said. How severe is the current market turmoil? Watch gold, the safe haven asset. Remember, this is yesterday. Stuck in the high $1,200 per ounce trading range, it is not signaling danger ahead. When gold begins to spike, it will signal true market fears. And remember, the spike level that is really the one, and we don't give financial advice, we're saying gold will spike to $2,000 an ounce is when it hits 1450 which it hasn't done in a long time. And copper prices are down again. Remember, copper is used in everything. Dr. Copper tells you where the economy is going to go from high tech to heavy industry. And it keeps going down. And so too, oil prices really got hit. Oh, and that had something, of course, to do with the Mexican deal. However, it's a global slowdown. Oil slumped on Friday on track for its biggest monthly drop in six months. Brent crude fell 3.59% to $64.47. Remember, it was hovering around the $70 a barrel. So, where's it going to go? Depends also what's happening in the Middle East over there because if war breaks out, oil goes up. Venezuela's 13... <laughs> no, I got the number wrong. Venezuela's 130,000% inflation reflects rocketing price of economic meltdown. It also reflects America's economic warfare imposed upon Venezuela. Now... If you were a Venezuelan and you had boulevards and you took those boulevards and turned them into gold, would you be doing okay? Again, watch gold prices. They're starting to strengthen. If they continue to go up, it's going to signal how bad things are going to get. 
Here we go. Financial Times. Fed to consider rate cut if outlook darkens. If outlook darkens, hey, stupid, you guys got it wrong all the time. You're always reacting rather than proacting. Could you see where this is going? Because, here we go, your trend alert. Remember, this is May 31st, 2019 from the Financial Times. The Wall Street Journal, another story on lower interest rates. Futures markets now imply there is an 84% probability that central banks will cut rates at least once before the year ends. At least once, 84 probability. Guess what else they said? As of March, most policymakers projected rates would stay on hold in 2019. Not in the Trends Journal because in our 27 March trend alert, when most policymakers said rates were not going to go down, we forecast that a global economic slowdown and weakening corporate earnings in the United States, coupled with the fading positive effects of President Donald Trump's tax bill, would compel the U.S. Federal Reserve, quote, to lower interest rates before economic conditions markedly deteriorate. The facts are there. Again, everyone listening out there, remember to subscribe to the Trends Journal at trendsjournal.com, the only magazine in the world where you read history before it happens, and all you subscribers, tell your friends. The more we get, the more we can do. So what else do we have here? Ah, hey, you heard it first from us many, 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 many months ago. That 30-year home mortgage, yep, hovering around 5% in November, we said it was going to go below 4% in 2019. That's right. Mortgage rates fall below 4%. Here we are, 3.99%. Lower rates should give a boost to the housing market, which has been on the upswing, said Freddie Max, chief economist. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> and talking about lower rates, how about lower incomes? The average millennial has an average net worth of the grand total of $8,000. Millennials are doing far worse than generations before them. With student loans, rising rents, and higher health care costs, pushing the average net worth down. The net worth of Americans aged 18 to 35, you ready for this? Has dropped 34% since 1996. The demographic is paying more for education and such basics as food, transportation, while incomes have largely flattened. Median household income is below 1999 levels. All the money's gone to the 1%. All this... Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. It's horseshit. Oh, millennials like experiences. They like to travel. They don't want to buy a house. They don't want to buy a car. They can't. Many of them can't because the bigs have taken everything. They used to be mom and pop shops. They're gone. The bigs have taken over everything. The Amazons, the Googles, the Home Depots, the Lowe's, the Staples. No more hardware stores, stationery stores, dress shops, men's shops. They're all owned by the big because the slimy little low lives that morons and imbeciles love to call Republicans and Democrats sold us out and just made us a lot of workers on a multinational plantation of Slavelandia. And it's only going to get worse because in the United States, the morons and imbeciles still support the Bloods and the Crips, the Republicans and the Democrats, no third party movement in the 2020 presidential reality show. I like Biden. I like Sanders. I like Beto O'Rourke. What a freak show. And you got to be a freak to like them. College enrollments decline. That's right. But with some exceptions. Falling enrollments are creating winners and losers with many small colleges. 
closing down. But nationwide, more academically elite institutions are thriving. Economically elite. And that's what it's become. The haves and the have-nots. Oh, by the way, that's from the Wall Street Journal. And I love these words, gig economy, you know, all this other crap. FedEx to start delivering on Sundays. Isn't that nice? FedEx Corp. said it would start offering Sunday delivery to most U.S. homes. Now, when I was a young guy, they used to have a thing called the Blue Laws. Every place was closed on Sunday. Even the drugstores, they wouldn't open up. That's when you didn't have CVS and owning everything. And Walgreens used to have, we used to have Mr. Robbins' drugstore. Yeah. All the neighborhoods had their own drugstores. Not anymore. The big zone of them all, thanks to the slime balls, called Republicans and Democrats. But anyway, everything was closed. I was a soda jerk at Yurks. Write about it in my book, What Zizzy Gave Honey Boy. This is my favorite book, by the way. Take a look at that cover. That's my Aunt Zizzy. <coughs> May she rest in peace. But anyway, we used to close at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That was after church. The 1 o'clock mass was over. People left. Everything was closed down on Sunday. It was a day of rest, and now everybody works. People used to come over and buy newspapers in those days, but newspapers are gone. New York Times used to be like, that fat, you know. Anyway, working more, earning less. On to some international news. Taliban expects U.S. to announce an Afghan pullout date. We don't. We say it's going to happen when Trump is running heavily in the 2020 presidential reality show. He'll make a deal with Afghanistan and North Korea. Pompeo says Iran sabotaged tankers to raise oil prices. Hey, Pompeo, you got it wrong, man. Them oil prices are way down. Yeah, I read about it. What a bunch of crap. No evidence at all, but they never give any. Not one shred of evidence. Anyway, top U.S. general claims Intel showed Iran mounting a campaign against the United States. Chairman of the United States Chief of Staff, General Joe Dumford, has revealed that it was he who was driving recent military deployments into the Middle East, saying he recommended them based on intelligence with respect to Iran. Intelligence? What intelligence? They're a bunch of liars. Hey, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. It ties to Al-Qaeda. Yeah, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Remember the main? No, we're too old, too young to remember that one. That happened like in the 1900s, a little before that. But anyway, they're always lying. Intelligence? What intelligence? You got a bunch of stupid people lying to us. Dumford claimed malign activity and threats to our forces by the Iranians are not new. Get out of Syria. What are our forces doing there? How about occupying peace? Yeah, go to OccupyPeace.com because the maniacs want war. How about getting out of Libya? That Obama, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, destroyed. How about getting out of Iraq? How about getting out of Afghanistan? Our forces. Our forces should be protecting the homeland and honor the founding fathers, Dumford. Beginning with George Washington, Dumford. No foreign entanglements. You got it. Occupy peace. Here's the propaganda, beautifully laid out. Tehran brings guerrilla tactics to Gulf. And they got these pictures over here, right? And they got the ships. They got the seven Corvettes. Huh, how many Mustangs they have? They got uh, 19 submarines. They got a hovercraft. Fast attack craft. They got 99 ships, little nothings. You know how much the United States has Navy? Almost 500. But that's the propaganda. And Netanyahu mocked as gamble to find coalition fails. And that's the headline from the Financial Times. So, you know, Netanyahu won the election in April. And here's what they say. Cobbling together a majority in the Knesset should have been a feat of complex arithmetic and boosting lawmakers' egos. But over 40 days of negotiations... 
Mr. Netanyahu focused on gaining Knesset members' support for legislation that would shield him from a pending prosecution for corruption, fraud, and breach of trust. And here's another one. Blinded by pride, Romanian's top political politician begins prison term for abuse of power. Name the country, name the freak, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, you name it, they're running and ruining a country near you. And that's why you need to occupy peace. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.